good morning and thank you uh, pastor shannon for inviting me to speak uh, to the church and utsav has always been very close to my heart and uh, the way that uh, uh, you infectiously uh, enjoy the lord and if i if anybody sees you the way that you worship and they can't but worship the lord and that's one of the uh, good traits of your church and uh, i have very fond memories of uh, uh, your church over the years and uh, thank you uh, pastor shannon uh, for having me to speak to the church uh, this morning and i'm going to speak to you on a topic called faith under fire and i've been meditating on this topic uh, uh in the last few months and uh, from various passages uh faith under fire but i thought that i'm going to share with you from the book of daniel and how the faith and how faith of four friends uh is tested uh in the times of crisis israel is under lockdown israel was in exile and these four friends were taken as a captives from their familiar surroundings and taken into a new territory babylon and they were given all kinds of uh, uh, things and all kinds of privileges and yet they never compromised on their faith and their faith was proven time and again despite many many difficulties so I want you to turn with me to Daniel chapter 3 even as we meditate uh these three young men on their faith under fire. In order to understand chapter 3 you need to see that chapter 3 in a context. The context comes from Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2 where Nebuchadnezzar king Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon had a dream of a statue and he couldn't understand that what that dream was all about and he without telling what the dream was he asked people to interpret and finally it was daniel who said in order to spare everybody's lives and he said i'm going to interpret the dream and i'm going to tell you what the dream is all about and he comes back to his friends the three friends that he had and he says that god has revealed to him the dream and in chapter 2 he goes on to pray about that dream and asking god to prepare him before he goes to the king so chapter 3 and the statue that you see in chapter 3 that whole idea comes from chapter 2 where nebuchadnezzar saw a statue that symbolized power and various types of powers that are going to come and he felt that this building a statue signifies the power that he can exert over his kingdom how many times even in 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 uh, everywhere in in the world a statue is taken as a symbol of power it signifies something you can look at various statues and i don't need to name those statues they all signify somebody's person persona idols and statues and then daniel prayed about this dream that nebuchadnezzar had and he prepared himself before he went to the king he is another person who faced the king with a lot of prayer another person that i that comes across to me very immediately is nehemiah when he really wanted to to say something to the king he prepared himself in prayer and then he went in before the king in the same way he prayed in daniel chapter 2 verse 21 and 22 power of a prayer of those who are in the lockdown 
Daniel chapter 2 verse 21 and 22. And he says, this is what he says. Praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. Wisdom and power. Here is Nebuchadnezzar in chapter 3 wanted to set up a statue so that he can declare that he has the power in his wisdom. He felt that a, 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 a statue is the right one to do. And here is Daniel praying and he's saying, Praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. And now here is a thing that comes. He changes times and seasons. He changes times and seasons. Even this exile will pass away. The lockdowns will go away. The things that are we see are all temporary. These things will change. And then he says, deposes, he deposes kings and raises up the other. He is actually interpreting the dream that is in chapter 2. And here he is saying, this statue symbolizes the temporariness of kings and their powers. But he gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells in him. Daniel appeals to the sovereignty of God. And he says that that is the kind of a God that we serve. So this is the kind of a faith that we have. A faith that says we trust in a God who doesn't change. Times and seasons, the kings and kingdoms will pass away. But the one that will stay permanent is our never changing God. And that is our faith. So when you come to chapter 3, the setup was done. You can see the setup in chapter 3. The four friends of their faith. The four friends were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah. Daniel was named as Belteshazzar. Hananiah, which means that Yahweh is gracious, was named as Shadrach. That means that commander of Aku. In actual Hebrew, it is called Shadraku. Means the commander of Aku. Mishael, which is a Hebrew name, means that God is who he is. And he is named as Mesheku. In English, it is called Meshek. In Hebrew, it is Mesheku. Means Aku is who he is. Azariah means Yahweh has helped. And his name became Abednego. That means that he is a servant of Nego. Aku and Nego are Babylonian uh, uh, gods. They named them after their gods. One reason to change their names is to remove any traces of history of Hebrew uh, of faith in their names. You can change the name, but can you actually remove the faith that is there in their heart? All the things that are there, the, the thing, all the things that are surrounding might be changing. They may not be worshipping in Jerusalem. They may not be actually seeing the scripture portions, but can it remove the inherent faith that is in their hearts by changing the names? Can they remove the faith of these young boys? They couldn't. And you can see that happening in chapter 3. Faith attracts attention. Faith attracts attention because their faith is undying. Their faith is living. They are able to live out their faith day in and day out and that attracts attention. Faith that doesn't attract attention is not living out its very nature. Faith attracts attention. 
people went to the king the chaldeans went to the king and said these three boys are not bowing the bowing to the statue that you have actually set up and the crisis is set up to test their faith it's a perfect setup to test their faith so i'm going to leave with you seven things that these hebrew boys have brought to the focus while they faced this fiery furnace number 1 faith brings discernment a faith brings discernment discernment about what a discernment to have actions without fanfare it brought faith without any fanfare that is wonderful to see faith without fanfare exile is a sort of a furnace to israel why when they came to babylon there was no temple there was no music there is no choir there was no music instruments you really have to live your faith without any kind of a fanfare in exile in jerusalem when they entered into jerusalem i want you to imagine when you entered into that grand temple of jerusalem there was all kinds of a colorful things all around them there were uh, musical instruments there was somebody playing a harp somebody was singing songs sons of korah were singing songs there was a high priest actually uh, uh, giving and praying and making offerings and imagine those high doors and all kinds of a linen that is hanging there that somehow gives you a sort of a high to your faith ah i am a jew i am here in the temple and i am in the presence of god but in babylon what are they doing there was no temple they are in the most unfamiliar circumstances it is something that was they are not used to and their faith is tested faith brings a discernment it brings to focus actions without a fanfare these four friends were tested when there were nobody was watching their faith was tested when they were nobody was watching them they were tested in the matters of food they were tested in the matters of worship they could have easily compromised nobody is watching them but they said i will not compromise and i will make sure that we stay pure is our faith comes with that kind of a discernment and direction our faith is exercised without any kind of a fanfare sometimes i find that in this crisis we started to discover or rediscover our faith why we follow jesus with all our hearts why we do follow him follow him and i think that is a very important thing for our faith secondly faith the brings perspective about god and who we are in daniel chapter 3 verse 17 and 18 and this is what the three friends said if we are thrown into the blazing furnace the god we serve is able to deliver us but even if he does not we want you to know your majesty that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up where does this faith come from how can they stand in front of that kind of a king and speak like that where does that faith come from how can you speak like that in a foreign country how dare you can speak that you would lose your citizenship you would lose your rights in that country you would lose your very existence in that country but where does your faith come from your faith 
apparently I, I, can, I can sense that it is coming from the way that they were brought up. Look at their names. Azariah, Mishael, Hananiah, Daniel. When you are calling their names, what are you calling them? God is who he is. God is, uh, God is gracious. He has helped us. God is my judge. When you are calling out their names, there is a faith in embedded, embedded on their names. Is our name signify anything? I'm not talking about my name, Madhav or Pastor Shannon or Samir. I'm not talking about these uh, names. I'm talking about who we are. What is our name? We are Christians. We are followers of Jesus. We bear the imprint of Christ on us. Do we bring that perspective into our faith every day of our lives? We are the followers of Jesus. Third one, faith brings perseverance in the face of hurdles. There will be a lot of hurdles, but faith brings perseverance. In chapter 3, verse 25, it says that he, the king looked into the furnace and he said, Look, I see four men walking around in the fire. Walking around in the fire. Just because you are tested and there were obstacles in your life doesn't mean that you should stop. Keep going. We are walking around in the fire. Obstacles should not stop us. Never stop just because you have faced hurdles in life. We go through fire and not to fire. There's a lot of difference. We go through fire. I remember when I was studying in SABC, I used to sing this song. If you catch hell, don't hold it. If you're going through hell, don't stop. If you catch hell, don't hold it. If you're going through hell, not to hell, don't stop. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. A beautiful song. We go through fire and not to fire. Fire is a process not a destination. Fire is only a process. For those who follow Jesus, like the way that, uh, uh, what I said in the previous point, we are the followers of Jesus. For the followers of Jesus, fire is a process and not a destination. For those who do not follow Jesus, for those who do evil, fire is a destination. Fire is a process for all of us. We go through fire. As church leaders, we go through fire. Why? Because we get tested through that fire. That's what the uh, book, uh, book of Corinthians says. Let each of you who are in the leadership understand how you build the church. Build the temple of God. Are you going to build with wood, hay, straw that is going to be easily be destroyed by the fire? Or are you going to build with gold and silver and precious stone which is going to be tested by fire and will still retain its character? Fire tests the believer. We go through fire. Even when we go through the fire, God says that I'm going to be with you. You're going to be tested. Do not be surprised that you, you are going to be tested and you are going to be put through all kinds of hurdles. Believers are also tested in fire. So, when we go through fire, don't give up because we hope in the Lord and those who hope in the Lord will always renew their strength. Turn to somebody and say, I have a hope in the Lord. And that's why you renew strength during these times. Faith brings perseverance. Next. Fourthly, faith makes us to walk in step with God. God is going to be with us. 
In Daniel chapter 3 verse 25, just the scripture portion that we read. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound, ununharmed, and the fourth looks like the son of God. Crisis brings the company of mockery, mockers and misery. Crisis has this attraction. It attracts the mockers all around you. Isn't it? You look at uh, in book of Daniel, you have the Shalians. The Shalians coming and telling kings all kinds of a stuff. They are, mock, they are making a, a mockery of uh, uh, Daniel's uh, faith. And you have these Tobias, Sanbalats, and Geshems in the book of Nehemiah. When Nehemiah was building a, 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 a wall, all these Tobiah, this uh, entire gang of uh, friends started making a mockery to Nehemiah. How can you build this wall? If a fox goes over the wall, your wall will collapse. You look at uh, in the book of Esther, Naaman, how he mocked and how he conspired. Crisis sometimes brings these people who can mock at us and also bring misery to us. Crisis has this. But I tell you what, crisis also brings the company of the angels and God to you. Psalm 23 says that even though you walk through the valley of shadow of death, you fear no evil because he is going to be with you. Psalm 23. In the same way, Isaiah chapter 7, when King Ahaz was facing a crisis, whether he should actually go and, and seek the help from uh, uh, Egypt to fight a war against Aram, against Syria. One of the things that uh, Isaiah tells him, King Ahaz, don't look here and there. God is going to be with you. He's going to give you a sign. A virgin shall conceive a son and you shall name him Emmanuel. And it means God is with us. Crisis brings the perspective in such a way that God is going to be with us. Faith makes us to walk in step with God. Job chapter 23. Job had these uh, uh, friends who actually mocked at his faith. In Job chapter 23, this is what Job says when his friends told, told him and said, Why don't you cry out to your God? Where is your God in this time? And this is what he says in Job chapter 23. When he is at work in the north, I did not see him. When he turns to the south, I catch no glimpse of him. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. My feet have closely followed his steps. I want you to underline that word. In Job chapter 23 verse 9 to 11, it says that my feet have closely followed your steps. God is walking and my feet are closely following in his steps. The reason why God makes us to walk through that fire is that he walked himself and he's saying, now put your step in my feet, in my steps and walk. I walked where he walked. And that's the reason why he took the form of a human and died for me on the cross so that he's been tested in every way just like the way that you and I were tested. He walked before me so that I can walk in his footsteps. Let us make, let us walk in step with God. And in this time of crisis, in the time of our trials and tribulations, in this kind of a confinement, our faith calls us to step, walk in step with God. Sixthly, faith under fire is not a surprise at all. Don't be surprised when the faith is under fire. Faith under fire for a follower of Jesus is an expected uh, outcome. Faith attracts attention and also attack. First Peter chapter 4, verse 12 and 13, it says, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come to you, test you, as though something strange is happening to you. But rejoice. 
In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1 to 3, the promise of God is that do not be afraid for I'm going to be with you. Faith under fire is not a surprise. But at the same time, the presence of God in that time, during those times, is also not a surprise because he's going to be with you. Faith under fire sets you free. Number six. Faith under fire sets you free. Chapter 3 verse 25. This is what King said. Look, I see four men walking around in the fire unbound. Unbound. I want you to underline that word. Unbound. We will lose in the fire the one that is holding us back. We will lose in the fire the one that is holding us back. When we are tested, when we are put through the crisis, the things that are binding you, the things that are holding you back will burn away. When these three friends were thrown into the fiery furnace, their hands were tied. They were wearing ropes and they are tied with ropes. The one that was burnt and were set free, the one that were burnt were the ropes, not their ropes. It sets you free to go up. Crisis will set you free and make you go up. And that's exactly what happened in Daniel chapter 3 verse 30. When they came out, the king said, the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in the province of Babylon. They received a promotion. I'm telling you, when you are going through the fire, when you get tested, when you are walking in step with God during this crisis, the one that is holding you back is burnt away. And it sets you free to go up and to go up. And lastly, faith brings the fourth person into play. There are only three people were thrown into the fire, but the fourth person came into play there. And that is all that matters. Fire brings the fourth person. We can be blinded to our limitations and numbers, who we are and kind of all kinds of activities. We can't do it all alone. We can't do it by ourselves. We can say, I'm empty handed Lord. Like John chapter 21, when, when the disciples went into the sea and came back and they said to the Lord, Lord, we caught nothing. We are blinded by our own limitations. And God said, don't worry. Cast your net on the right side. In Luke chapter 24, when these friends were walking on the Amos road, that they did not understand a lot of things that happened in Jerusalem. And they were scratching their head and thinking and discussing, how do we make sense of all this? A lot of things we don't understand. And it is important that we depend on God. And that is when God walked with them and he said, I'm with you. And that is when they said, didn't our, bur our hearts burn inside when he was talking to us? The presence of Jesus and God is with us when we did not understand things. And the things that we go through, God is still with us. Friends, church, whatever you may be going through today, if you're going through the crisis and you did not understand, you don't know where your life is heading in, in this crisis. And you are thinking, why am I thrown into this fire? Why the things that are most unexpected are happening to me? If your faith is getting tested and then you are having crisis and that crisis is bringing all kinds of a misery and the mockery around you and the kind of an uncertainty that is around you into your life, into your job, into your family, into your marriage, into your children's education. I want you to understand that God brings this kind of uh, opportunities for us so that we understand our faith. Faith is discerning. 
Faith brings perspective about God. Faith brings perseverance. Faith makes us to walk in step with God. Faith under fire is not a surprise. Faith under fire sets you free. Faith brings the fourth person into play. God bless you. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? Father, we thank you for this time. And I pray, Lord, that uh, you would continue to minister to this church and minister to each and every person who is going through a crisis and understanding what is going to happen in their lives. And I pray, Lord, that you would minister to them. May your name be glorified and be blessed. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen.